Greetings, greetings. It is Thursday, and I am your host, Georgia F. Allen, and it is GA for Justice. And as always, we want to say thank you to Mr. Henderson Vaughn, our favorite engineer, our favorite person that makes sure that we can get on the air and talk a little bit to the community about what is going on and what are the things that we can do to make things better. We hear a whole lot of talk about what's wrong, but we very rarely hear about what is right and what people are doing every single day to make a better community. So with that being said, I just want to thank the dream maker, aka Captain 85, who keeps these airwaves open to bring our listening audience a conversation, a conversation for information, a conversation for correction, as well as a conversation for transformation. And how are you doing out there, Mr. Vaughn? I'm doing great. I'm fantastic. Always excited to have you, you know, your show on so that people throughout the 757 and VA2 up and two down in the world to know that, you know, you've been an uh, advocate for, you know, what you do in the community from being president of the NAACP, being vice president of the NAACP active now. Uh, you've done so much. You know, you also had run for city council of Virginia Beach at one time. Uh, but like I said, is you you constantly keep the torch lit so it can be passed on to the next Absolutely. Generation. Absolutely. And guess what? We have a famous person coming to us today. Oh. A famous person, Ms. Juanita Williams. Ms. Williams is a resident of Virginia Beach since 2009. Actively involved in local, state, and federal elections. She has worked as constituent services director for former Congresswoman Loria from January 2019 through January 2023. Ms. Williams managed all three of the second congressional district offices, providing assistance by navigating the federal agencies, helping our people navigate. Now, if you know anything about federal government, you better have a partner that can help you navigate because they Hello. got a whole lot going on. And so uh, part of what she does, she, she teaches you how to contact your representative, how the representative is voting, their legislative vote, the bills that they introduce. So she helped you navigate those bills that have been introduced. And the more we get involved, the merrier. So don't just tell your friends, ask for change. So she's asking us to don't, don't just sit back and wait for somebody to do something. Get on out there and start doing things. She also helped with inter internships as well as questions with regards to the R or IRS. And also many people have struggles when they're trying to get their passports. And of course, the congressional office is able to assist you and navigate that system as well. Juanita is a U.S. Navy veteran. She served the Navy for 24 years, retired as an aviation machinist mate chief in 2009. So we are so excited to have an experienced advocate for community issues and concerns. And we are bringing to you today the famous Ms. Juanita Williams. Wisdom from Juanita. Thank you for having me. You it's so good to be with you all. And thank you so much. Oh, uh, gosh. <laughs> all right. I am so excited for these host of series that reach in the community. Mm -hmm. You know, since since we left office, I've just been sitting and I'm saying, how can I help the community? And I watch you, Georgia, and the things that you do, the amazing work that you do. And I, I say, I know if you can be out here doing this, I need to be out here doing this, you know. So it sounds like you're saying to me, you are fired up. Yeah, I I'm sure am, and I'm ready to go, and I'm ready to go. <laughs> all and, right, all right. Hey, somebody give me a spot, and look, I, I don't really need a mic because my voice is loud enough, so <laughs> I, that part right there I don't need, but what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, it's so much that our community 
the, uh, misses out on. And I learned a lot from working in Congress. Mm-hmm. When, you know, the phone calls that we receive that mm-hmm. I think that having these series of events and the first one is voter education mm-hmm. and letting the citizens know, because I think a lot of times we disengage because there's things that we don't understand. And Correct. a lot of times politicians speak on a broader range that where mm-hmm. citizens don't really understand. Uh-huh. But everything, but everything they do touches them. It touches everything our lives. Politi- it touches our lives, and Absolutely. it touches our lives for de- generations. Mm-hmm. And when we don't engage, and you know, we sit and we're mad. We can't be mad at anybody but us. Exactly, because, because we are the ones. If you don't vote, you voted. <laughs> exactly, and that's why we have the topic today. If you don't know. Now you know. Now you know. And for our yeah. young people who love some Biggie Small, guess what? We're bringing you Biggie today because we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put that information out to you. So we don't ha- we won't have people saying, "Well, I didn't know that." Well, guess what? Yeah, we have Juanita here to talk to you today. And if you don't know, now you know. <laughs> <laughs> because when right. you know, you know, and there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with not knowing it. You know, I talked to my daughter, and mm-hmm. I, I eat, sleep, and drink politics. And my daughter says, "Mom, you can turn anything into politics." And I say, "All of our lives revolves around politics." Absolutely. You know, you know, people were like, "Oh, Taylor Swift with Ticketmaster," and see what happened with the, all of that with politics. Absolutely. You know, and we need to be engaged because when we're not, they love it when we're not engaged. <laughs> when we're not engaged, they get to do what they want to do. Mm-hmm. And it affects us. It Absolutely. really affects us. Another state's political stuff affects us here in Virginia. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and, so and that's why the topics that you're doing, um, a little bit more about um Miss Juanita. Miss Juanita has decided now that she has all this free time available to her. She she's no longer uh, working in the congressperson office, um, and so that allowed her to begin to look at things that she can do for the community. And what she decided to do is have some listening uh, sessions throughout the community, and uh, it will allow her to hear from the community, but also give the community information again that maybe you don't know. And so while we're not going to delve deep into the topic, because we want you to show up at at her classes, and there is no cost for you to come. And the first one is going to be held this coming Tuesday, August the 22nd at Ebenezer Baptist Church at 6.30 p.m., 925 Baker Road. So I would like you guys to come there. And this is not this is not anything, if you don't know, now you know, mm-hmm. because it's going to be something that's engaging. It's going to it's going to speak to everybody on their level. It's nothing that's going to be above your head. You know, it's just going to be something that may be enlightening. It, you know, it may be something you may know, and it may be something, you know, I work the polls and people get to the polls and I talk to them. And it's like, I didn't know that, you know, even before they go in to vote. Mm-hmm. And it's like, nobody ever said that, you know, I see these ads and Nobody ever said this in this ad. And, you know, they say, well, I'm going to go in and vote different because now that you're telling me this, I didn't know this. Mm -hmm. And I just want to help us to understand how this political spectrum uh, affects our lives because it does affect our lives. And, uh, you know, so I just want to have this these conversations and have the conversations in person so you're able to ask ask me questions. You know, if it's something that I don't know, I will have my number and everything so you can get back to me, you know, so I can get back to you. Sorry. So I can get back to you with that very answer and a truthful answer, not something, you know, because a lot of times people share things on social media and they don't even read it. You know, they share stupid stuff on social media and it's like you haven't even read what that says, you know, and then a lot of people are going sharing it and sharing it and sharing Mm -hmm. it. And it's something that's stupid and it doesn't even make sense. But I want everybody to have the truth about what's really going on. And that is so very important because I have had to stop myself a number of times. I'll see something pop up in headlines, you know, that that headline will draw you in. 
and I'll look and I'll see who shared it with me. And I'm thinking, okay, they, they read it. They know what it says. So I can share it. And then my, when my spirit tells me, wait a minute, go ahead and read it. And then I read the article and I'm like, why are you sharing this? So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll hide that article so yeah. that other people won't, you know, keep pushing it and pushing it down. So again, like you're saying, when you're coming out there talking to people in the community, just little things like that, that's politics as well. What, what I do on Facebook, when I say that article should not be shared, is basically another form of political engagement or non-engaging in something that is not of value to the community. Yes. Yes, definitely. So your first session is coming up on? It's going to be Tuesday, August 22nd, Ebenezer Baptist Church at 6.30 p.m. And I want you all to come out. We're going to have fun. We're going to learn. You know, it'll be a lot to learn. Uh, some things, like I say, you may know, but there's going to be a lot of things that you may not know. And you'll be like, wow, I didn't know that, <laughs> you know. And it'll be things uh, also about people who are trying to get their rights back for voting also. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a lot of um, education and I'm going to give out some cards, you know, with information on it that you all will realize, you know, you'll find out and I'll give you information to how you can find out about every candidate that's on any ballot also. So I will give out cards for that also. And you can find their social media, any platform that they have that you'll be able to look up their information also. That's so I hope fantastic. you all will come out. Yeah, That is good. So this voter education, voter registration, and absentee voting will be your topics, correct? Yes, yes. yes. And, and interactive? Oh, yes, definitely interactive. Because, I don't, you know, I want everybody to be able to ask me anything that they want to ask, you know, because there's going to be questions that people may think of right then. It's like, I didn't, you know, I didn't know about this information, you know, mm -hmm. or how can we do this in the community? Any age group in particular? Any, any age group, you know, hey, it may be, set, you know, 17, you know, they get a start vote, you know, mm -hmm. older, you know, older people, you know. Mm -hmm. And like I say, I work the polls every year. Every year I work my poll, polling location. So, you know, the morning of elections, I tell, you know, I start texting them, hey, it's an election. And one thing about Virginia, we vote every year. So <laughs> we, we got to stay on top of it. Right. That is true. That is so true. So for all of our young people who are listening, uh, who have already linked in to GA for Justice today, please send this information out. Uh, we're, we're here to try to help educate our community. And our goal is not to think someone else is better than someone or to only try to talk about everything that's negative. We're here to also educate you on all the wonderful things going on, just like what uh, Miss Juanita is doing. Miss Juanita is out here providing resources. And uh, I like the fact that you have cars that will, you'll make available to people. And um, the other thing you'll know about Miss Juanita we were at city council together, I think last week. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and she doesn't hesitate to go up to that microphone and tell people what she feels and how she feels. And, and uh, we do a lot of stuff in the area of voter education. And one was the change in the voting system here in Virginia Beach. You want to share a little bit with them? I know that we both spoke on that subject, but as someone who has actually served as a representative of a congressperson, you can perhaps you know share some some perspective of the effect and the importance of changing uh, the way things were being done here in the city of Virginia Beach, and how that you know others. Mm -hmm. Well, first off, I had Miss Miss Georgia look at my stuff to see to make sure I wouldn't get, get up there and cut up because I can cut up sometimes. But uh, you know, I told you know as a twenty four year uh, veteran in uh, the military and. You know, if we go and we keep doing the same thing over and over, which they were doing, they were not trying to have all the citizens votes, you know, count with the old system that they had. And I'm like, you know, when I'm knocking doors out here, people feel like their votes don't count. And I'm like, if you keep doing the same thing over and over, you know, 
you know, 80% of the people say they like this new system, but they keep every week, they want to keep on hashing it out again, hashing it out again. Let's do another survey. So it's basically like saying, hey, the same thing with the 2020 election. Until you get the results you want, it wasn't fair. You know, and I'm like, can we get on with the saying this is fair and quit doing this over and over, wasting man hours? Because we wouldn't get an aircraft off the flight deck or off the runway if we keep on doing this. And guess what? The constituents are watching you, okay? They watching exactly what you're doing. And I see some people want to keep that same power that they have over us and not let other people win. You know, people used to call our office and, you know, they would tell us, you know, well, they don't like the person that's in. And I tell them, hey, if you don't like who's in, then you run. You know, that's what we got to do. And we have to use our power at these polls. And that's why I'm doing this voter education, because we have the power. Absolutely. And, and we have we have to boss up because we the bosses. Absolutely. Yeah. And we need to encourage our young people to get engaged. Join a campaign, work a campaign one season because campaigns are just for a season, believe it or not. It oh, is yes, a season. <laughs> and everybody campaigns and, and, and learn what they're doing inside of those campaigns. Learn uh, something about the different positions, because a lot of people think of a campaign simply as a candidate. But there's a whole lot more to a, a campaign than just that candidate. OK. And speaking of that, uh, that also is I was a volunteer on Congresswoman Loria's campaign. I wasn't, I was retired. I was not looking for a job. There were people paid on her campaign. I was a volunteer on her campaign. When we had a party, my uh, blue wave group, she asked me, came up and whispered in my ear and said, I don't know what you're doing, but I would like you as part of my staff. And I said, I wasn't looking for a job. Mm -hmm. And that's how I end up working for her. So any of you all that are sitting back, mm -hmm. these campaigns that are going on, you never know how are you going to end up in somebody's office? And that's one of the things, you know, and I tell people when they're complaining, you know, I say, you know, don't complain about these people, you know, get involved in their campaign and see what's going on. You mm -hmm. know, people donate, you know, donate, knock a door, make a phone call. You know, when you believe in these candidates, help them out because they need all the help. And you can text from you right from your couch. I text for Georgia, Ohio, all these different candidates, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, the United States, what happens in one state affects us all. So that is the thing. When everybody was waiting on that, st that stimulus from President Biden, guess what? They was waiting on that uh, Georgia election, them, them Senate races, wasn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> they was waiting on that Senate race. Absolutely. Like, come, on, come on, Reverend Warnock. Come on, Reverend <laughs> yeah. Warnock. <laughs> All over the country, they were praying that he would country. get across the finish line because they knew that would give them the uh, the necessary the numbers, votes numbers. to yes. pass legislation. And yes. that's so important. So if you don't know, y'all, now you know. Now you know. <laughs> now you know <laughs> how every election is important. And that's on all levels. You know, all levels. Local level. You think, oh, well, that's not that important. But when the lawsuit took place and the city of Virginia Beach was sued because of Voting Rights Act violation and the judge ruled in the favor of the plaintiffs, guess what? That said, OK, you can make some changes in the city of Virginia Beach and not have that old dilapidated system that is not beneficial to the masses of people, even people on the hotel that own hotels know and understand that if I'm not part of the big guys, I don't get the same privileges as the big guys. And I'm a hotel owner as well. And so having true representation versus uh, having this, uh, what do you call it? Little good old board club and cronyism mm -hmm. and all of this, having a chance to actually elect somebody to office that you can count on that will represent you and not just continue to cater to small few people that's that's helpful to to the business owners as well so they a lot of people looked at it as we're just interested in one uh, community or one group but no we understood that uh changing an election system 
affect all these small businesses, it affects zoning, having people that can represent you. Am I correct? Oh, yes. Yes. And then when people say something is always happening at the beach area, getting all of the money and people say, well, why isn't this area getting the money? Just like you're talking about the SeaTac area with that zoning. Mm -hmm. And yes. Yeah, because we get we got a situation right now. SeaTac, small black community, predominantly black area, uh, old community, you know, one of the oldest communities in the United States. It was recognized in the United States Congress uh, um, for its legacy. And they want to put a battery manufacturing plant in there. And so when you're voting, when you're engaged, you can help uh, change the outcome. And, and again, going to these sessions and listening to the topics and, and, uh, and if it's not a topic that you care about, but you know that other people care about a particular topic, let your friends know. Don't keep the information to yourself. That has been one of the things that has slowed us down tremendously. So again, if you don't know, now you know. Share the information. <laughs> Oh, yes. So with that being said, you also have one coming up in September that's going to be talking about the VA. And tell us a little bit about um, veterans. We got a bunch of veterans here locally. Oh, yes. So I am a veteran also. I'm 100% service connected. Uh, disabled. And one of the things that uh, working with uh, Congress also, there are a lot of this, there is a lot of things that veterans don't know. And I want to work with uh, veterans. I want to put out information that veterans may not know as far as disability wise. And also like active duty, a lot of things that active duty don't know that they need to be doing while they're in the service. But as far as there are a lot of programs that veterans can take advantage of that they may not know about. So that's what I want to have that. And as far as filing claims and things that the that Congress can help with. So a lot of things that veterans don't know that Congress can help with, you know, uh, maybe it's getting a bed. If a veteran has a need for a specialized bed with their disability that they have, there are so many different things that I want to touch on just to inform them. And then uh, a veteran who has a spouse, my neighbor, I went to my neighbor's house. They call, you know, if it's politics or a VA or something on my streets, my, my neighbors will text me. And I went down and I was on my neighbor's VA website. And I'm like, you don't even have your wife listed. You get paid for a spouse if you have a disability. You get paid for a spouse, dependents, and all that. He didn't have his wife in there. Mm. And I'm like, you've been getting disability for how many years now? And your wife is not included on there? So I went in there. I added his wife. You know, I showed him how to add his wife. And, you know, uh, I'm like, you don't have... He was like, well, they sending me checks. I'm like, because you don't have yours, uh, you need to go in here and... He's he's a little younger than me, but I was like, you need to go in here and add your direct deposit. So I went through and showed him all the different things. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of stuff, you know, people don't even know there's an app for the VA. So it's a lot of different things that I want to show people that they can see right from their phone. Mm -hmm. And a lot of different uh, there's a lot of different stuff that the VA has done now that a lot of veterans don't know about. So that's what I want to do is just to update them and show them. And there's a lot of things that veterans, they go from 100%. So I'm permanent and total disabled. So my my disability rating will never go from 100 down. But if you're not permanent and total, it'll go, it can go down. And a mm -hmm. lot of veterans don't know. So a lot of them came to us in Congress. So I try to tell them, if you have surgery or different things, it'll go down. But I want to discuss some of those different things with the veteran to inform them about that, how that system works, because a lot of them don't understand how that works. So that's some of what I want to discuss with them and some of the different agencies that are out in town that can help them. Because there's one right around here 
by Mount Trashmore. But I'll get more into that when I do my training because I don't want you guys to hear everything <laughs> and don't show up. So right. you know, I'm gonna be putting that out. So I'll be back on the show right. as the time gets closer. So absolutely. Yes. Okay. And and what I'm hearing is that they have tools available. Um, so hopefully they're user friendly. Some of the online tools that are available, some of the apps that are available to our v veterans and uh, active duty. So are you sharing that those tend to be user friendly? They may need a little help in getting started, but once they get started, how oh, do, you yeah. feel? do you feel that they're pretty user friendly for? Oh, um, very user friendly. Very. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, very. And just at the, you know, you can see your appointments, all kind of stuff that people don't even realize is so handy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Well, we have today with us Ms. Juanita Williams. And Ms. Williams is a retired, um, let me get it right, because I don't like to mess it up, is a, is a retired U.S. Navy veteran. And she served in the Navy for 24 years and retired as an aviation machinist mate chief in 2009. Now, I know we weren't going to really talk about you personally, but just in case there are people going into the military and they're looking for various career paths, um, tell them what a machinist mate is and how do they work their way to chief. <laughs> All right. So one of the things, uh, I'm an aircraft engine mechanic, okay? okay. So uh, I've worked on the aircraft that, uh, I haven't worked on the F-14s or 18, the, some of the ones that you see at Oceana. I've worked on their engines. I was uh, first female test cell operator and instructor on the USS Nimitz. Oh, I, so, was, I was on the Nimitz. I went on the Nimitz and the U.S. Kennedy, but for other reasons. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so in, uh, nine, when they first started putting females on, I was the first female uh, in the jet shop. Okay. So uh, I was the first female that got qualified. I ran the test sale, uh, testing the engines that go in the uh, in aircraft that are at Oceana and at Norfolk. So mm -hmm. um, I became the first female operator and instructor. And... Uh, I've worked on the aircraft that are, uh, you see the helicopters that fly around here. I've worked on those uh, helicopters, the ones, the big ones and the small ones, mm -hmm. the H-60s and the uh, HM-4, uh, the, oh my gosh, I can't even get my brain together right now. But uh, both of those, the ones that helped in Katrina, that would be the ones that okay. evacuated the people. Mm -hmm. The ones that evacuated the people from uh, Katrina, that would be more, you would understand those. Mm -hmm. So it's HM 1415 and the other ones. Uh, I did 24 years in. And uh, the way, the one thing for advancement that I tell people is whenever you take an advancement test, the day you take that advancement test, start studying from then. People always want to wait until they find out if they made it or didn't make it, but then you're behind a curveball again. You got three more months till you take the next test. But if you once you once you find out if you made it, start studying. Then you then you're already ahead. I went and wrote the advancement test when I made chief. I got a chance to go in and write the advancement test for my rate. Mm -hmm. And when they say the ABCDs, how they they balance them out, they actually do balance those out. How many there are out of the testing. And uh, with that, always follow your bibliography. They have a bibliography that tells you what's going to be on the test. And that is the correct thing to follow. But the thing is, when you get your, when you take that test, my thing is, we always get out of the test and you remember questions. You'd be like, oh my God, let me look up that answer to that test. But the thing is, once you take that test, start studying for the next test. Mm -hmm. And if you made it, then guess what? You already ahead. Absolutely. So but, yeah. if you don't know, well, with <laughs> Miss Juanita here, now you know. So if you're interested in going into the military and want to be an aviation machinist mate and work on these big planes, because look, we need some qualified people working on, in these areas. And um, again, what we try to do is bring new information to the community 
for years and years, when we watch the uh, local news or the national news, you find that it tends to be very, very repetitive. As a matter of fact, I don't even think half of them have journalist degrees. They're, they came formerly a, a congressperson or a senator, and they're now supposed to be some type of expert or uh, uh, coming into these newsrooms and, and sitting on TV talking. And you're listening to this and you're like, yeah, it's okay, but I'm not sure that I believe what they're saying or <laughs> you're thinking that is it becomes a, a what they call it one of those salads you know word salad mm -hmm. of a whole bunch of stuff and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense so hopefully listening to ga for just is you're getting information that can be valuable to you you can take it back to your community you can take it back to your home you can talk to your friends about it you can look at it and uh, listen to us live or you can also listen to us later and uh, these various shows that we have, we have any number of guests that uh, talk about a number of different issues and a number of different topics. And sometimes you might have to go back and watch a second time. I know I sometimes have to, because I had someone on um, who was with NAMI, the National Association of Mental Health. And the young lady was just fabulous because she provided us a substantial amount of information. She let us know up front that she was not in the medical field, but she was a volunteer. And she uh, shared with us how there are all these resources similar to what you're talking about with your upcoming classes that you'll be doing. I'll call them classes, but they're uh, really like <laughs> little quick workshops that you go in, you share with people, and then you leave and everything. But the bottom line is we're always needing information from resources that have the professional skills and knowledge to provide us that information. And it is up to us as a community to bring these people on platforms that they can share their knowledge and hopefully make a difference in our community. So that's why we have you here. We have you here because we know that you have knowledge and experience that we don't personally have. And that knowledge and experience can be transferred to those who are listening. Uh, again, whether you're listening live or whether you listen later, this is valuable information for our community. And um, if you want, if you have something in particular to share, go ahead. <laughs> I just wanted to let you all know, also there is an internship that the Congress has so the senators and the House of Representatives, they have uh, internships for college students. So each semester they have internships that you can do. They have paid internships. They also have an art challenge and they have an app challenge. So if you go on any of their websites, you will see these. So that's one of the things. So the art challenge, that the art stays in the tunnel of the Capitol for uh, a year. And then you get to go down there for a ceremony and everything. And it's a really cool thing. Um, I have it on my phone when we went and did our, our retreat down there. But um, it's a really cool thing that they have. And uh, like my nephew, he was real art he was real artistic. And I never knew about it until I started working for uh, Congress. And I was like, oh, man, I never knew they had this for high school students. And they do it across the uh uh, across the country and they had one of amanda gorman's picture a picture of her when she when she did her poem and everything i was like oh my gosh from chicago somebody from chicago <laughs> but a lot of things you know mm -hmm. if you don't know now you know but now you know yeah so it allows our children to compete to perhaps get their picture on the wall of the of the uh Capitol building, is that what we're doing? In the tunnel, in the tunnel, in the tunnel? of the Capitol. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what ages are these students from high school, middle school? They're high school, they're high mm -hmm. school students for the art mm -hmm. challenge. And then they have the app challenge. I can't remember all of the ages. Mm -hmm. But if they go on to the website, you'll um the each person, each representative has that information on their websites. Because you would submit an application through there. Mm -hmm. The 
the art challenge has ended, but I think the app challenge is going to be ramping up now. I think that one ramps up in the fall. Okay. But it can be like a group um, mm -hmm. app challenge where they uh, invent something or they uh, some type of app that the, it could be a group or it could be a single one, you know, because mm -hmm. our kids are into all of the coding and different things that they do now. So uh, they have that information on their websites for it. That's good. So the app challenge is APP app, right? So yes, apps yes. that uh, kids do uh, using uh, software and technology. It uh, could be on the phone. It could be on the computer. It could be computer based or uh, digital yeah. based or what have you. Okay, mm -hmm. well that's that's yeah. see if you don't know now you know so we keep bringing a little information here and there and and that's why I do what I do that's why I do this show because I have uh, been very disappointed in what the media has been putting out uh, to our community and to the community at large because there are a lot of very positive things but they have us bogged down in a lot of rhetoric and a lot of slogans in a lot of, you know, um, things such as what is bump doing today? <laughs> and so mm -hmm. we get so tied up in that until we don't spend a lot of time in substantive things. And so this is very helpful. Now, uh, the Congress um, office also helped with passports. And I know a lot of people are doing a lot of traveling, even though they say that um, um, the economics is not that great. I don't seem to see that because I see the airports are constantly full. So kind of tell people about mm -hmm. uh, what happens if they run into a situation with trying to get a passport. Yeah. So uh, if you run into a situation where your passport, especially like emergency travel too, Mm -hmm. So you contact your, uh, you can, so when we talk about Congress, a lot of people don't realize Congress is the house of representatives. So I work for the house of representatives, which is, uh, con people say Congresswoman Loria, but Congress is the senators and the, wow. uh, the senators and the, house, the house that <laughs> makes Congress. <laughs> so, <laughs> Both of them, are, both of them are Congress, but you say Congresswoman Lori or whatever, and Senator mm -hmm. Warner or you know Kane. But if you run into a situation, you can contact either either your Congressperson or your uh, Senator, and what they will do is they'll put in a congressional inquiry, and they will con they will contact the passport office, and they can get your stuff overnighted to you, and they can or they can find out the status because sometimes you may be divorced and they need your divorce papers because you changed your name or whatever the case may be but they can get that found out and then if you haven't if you didn't apply to have it expedited or whatever they can get it expedited for you and get your passport to you you know sometimes people book the trips without you know getting the passport first and it's like okay well you put the horse before the carriage or whatever you know the carriage before the horse Mm -hmm. And so they can get those passports to you so that you don't lose all that money for your trip. So what you do is you contact them on their website. Most of them, they have you uh, contact them for services, help with the federal agency. You'll see on their website, it says help with the federal agency. And then what you do is you'll say uh, the, on, uh, I'm on Senator help with the federal agency and it'll have passports or, uh, whichever agency it is that you want uh help with it'll be uh other it'll say pa oh he has passport assistance on senator warner's so each one may have it worded different so mm -hmm. his has passport assistance or it can say um gosh darn um <laughs> It's a little it's, it right it's a little challenging when you do live, right? Yeah, when you do live, look, you're like, oh god, my brain's not working. <laughs> my brain just froze up. But um <laughs> each um uh, yeah, because it's under uh Department of Homeland, but they have different um when they do it, they'll have it on there and mm -hmm. you just put passport assistance under there, and mm -hmm. what they'll do is they'll contact the agency and find out what's going on. You know, if somebody doesn't pay their child support, they'll have a hold on it. And then they have to, they'll have to go through the whole 
thing of contact and getting that payment, then going through child support enforcement, child support enforcement, release it. And then they will, once they release it, then they'll go back through, you know, and then they'll release the passport. But then if the person keeps going and doing it over and over, they will keep collecting that money, <laughs> but they won't. Yeah, we had one they person doing it. that. We had one person doing that. And it was like, sir, each time you do that, they're going to collect that money, but they're not going to release your passport. Right. So the thing is, uh, once they get that release from uh, child support enforcement, then they will release that passport to him. So what happened with that? But if you do that anytime you ha and if it's an emergency, they will get it. They will get it through. The thing is, when people think about it, it you may say, well, I'm close to Washington, D.C., but another state depending on your social security and your passport ID number, another state is handling that. So it's not necessarily what you think who has it is Washington, D.C. And that's not necessarily who has your passport, who's processing your passport. So people think it's automatically D.C. because you're right here or whatever. It could be Oregon that has your passport process. Wow. Yeah. So folks who are listening today, if you don't know, now you know. <laughs> So it's not necessarily where you're living that will determine where your passport is processed. It just depends upon the uh, the situation, okay? Or how many passports are being processed in one location, and they need to send some over to others. And is that part of it? Yeah, as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're gonna take a um, quick break. I want to do some announcements. We got a lot of stuff coming up. I'm I'm sure people are aware, but there is quite a bit of stuff that's coming up. Um, and in Virginia Beach, we have what we call Parks After Dark. And that is done on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And we only have two weeks left, this week and next week. So uh, uh, 17th, 18th, and 19th from 5 p.m. until 11 p.m. And it there's no cost. You can come out, you, the family, um, they have food available from the food trucks. They generally have like four different food trucks and uh, items that you can choose from, from hot dogs to hamburgers to um, what they call the little uh, Asian bowls to um, chicken. And so you go up to the desk, you get your ticket and you tell them which food truck you'd like to go to. So I do encourage people to go out and participate. Again, it starts from 5 p.m. on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday to 11 p.m. at night. Uh, on Saturday night, they always have movie night. But on Thursday and Friday nights, they generally have a lot of activities uh, for the young people to participate in, whether it's Legos or some of these other uh, items that I don't know about because there are new toys and things that have come on the market and it's beyond my, uh, <laughs> beyond my reference base. But I wanna encourage you, Parks After Dark at Williams Farm Park, and that is located next to the Williams Farm Recreation Center across the street from the Williams Farm Recreation Center. And again, uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night this week, and the final weekend will be next week. And uh, so we wanna encourage you to participate. The other thing that we'd like to encourage you to participate in is Networking Thursdays. It's a business event. Uh, it's gonna be held tonight, August the 17th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. And it's gonna be hosted at Black Eyed Peas Restaurant at 1005 Lynn Haven Mall Loop. Virginia Beach. And this is coordinated in conjunction with council member Sabrina Wooten, who is a very strong advocate of small businesses. So again, there's a networking event tonight, August the 17th at 7 p.m. to 8.30 at Black Eyed Peas Restaurant, 1005 Lynn Haven Mall Loop. Or for those of you who are familiar with Virginia Beach, it's at the Lynn Haven Mall, okay? So go down there and stop by, meet some new business owners that maybe you don't know. It's an excellent way to network with uh, persons in the community. And then on Saturday, there is an event called Growing Business in the Beach. 
And we all need to grow our businesses if we are a business owner. Now, this is going to be presented by Ignite Business Series. And this is something that happens throughout the year and is sponsored by ENTR or Entrepreneur Advancement Program. That will be held Saturday, August the 19th, Virginia Beach Convention Center, 8.30 a.m. to 2 p.m., and there will be refreshments provided. Again, this event is supported by Council Member Sabrina Wooten, who is a strong, strong advocate of diversity in, um, in business. So she's looking for small business owners, uh, Black business owners, and business owners uh, throughout. The other thing that's coming up, and I'm very excited about this, and this is an NAACP bus trip for the 60th commemorative anniversary of the March on Washington. Now, it's going to be held next Saturday, August the 26th. The bus trip is only $75 per person. The deadline to get your money in is August the 24th. The bus will leave Indian River Park and ride at 970 Rion Drive. It's a park and ride um, place that the um, Hampton Roads Transit Authority uses uh, for uh, local bus trips. So if you're interested, please go online to Eventbrite and Google NAACP bus trip. NAACP bus trip for the 60th commemorative anniversary of the March on Washington. And this is exciting because what we want to do is we want our young people, all ages, to get on the bus, get on the bus and be a participant in this anniversary event. Um, I want to say I attended the 30th anniversary. And so I, I definitely plan on being at the 60th anniversary. Uh, the, uh, the theme, as always, of course, is the continuation of what Dr. King has started. And the NACP, we always say is diversity no matter what. So we want to make sure that you're out there, that you're involved. And diversity is just not about race, creed, or color. It is about many, it's about youth. We want diversity of our youth to be in, to participate. We want our seniors involved in participating. So we want diversity no matter what. So those are the announcements today. And I may go over them one more time, but they're going to be a lot quicker. I just wanted it to be where people can listen to this again, pull up this information, get involved, be present. One of the biggest things that we have is we're not present. And then we sit in our silos and we're like, well, this didn't happen or that didn't happen. Well, if you weren't present, your voice was not heard. So we're encouraging you to be present so people can hear your voice so they can know what it is that you care about and what you're concerned about. And with that being said, we're going to get back to our special guest. We wanted to give her a, a moment to pause because there's so much going on. It's really, I, I know how challenging it can be to talk for an hour. So <laughs> I try to take that into consideration. And so I'm, I'm looking for ways so that as I have a guest on, that they can um, be able to stay engaged and not feel like, well, hello there, Teresa. Appreciate you uh, coming on and, and uh, listening to us today. It's always good to see you. Um, but again, this information is valuable to our community. What you have to share, what you are in the process of doing is uh, so important. And the thing of it is, you don't have to live in Virginia Beach to hear this type of information with regards to voter education, registration, absentee voting. So uh, let the let the community know again what you're going to be doing. And I think you have what a total of ten topics that you're going to be doing throughout the year for from August of this year to May of next year. Correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
And so I'm going to be doing the first one is going to be, like you said, it's going to be voter education. It's going to be talking about absentee ballot, absentee ballots, early voting. And the biggest thing is it's going to be fun. It's going to be learning about things that didn't didn't necessarily weren't necessarily taught to us, Mm -hmm. you know, to get us engaged because we disengage when we don't understand the process Mm -hmm. and we don't understand the benefits of it. You know, a lot of times that they tell us that the process, you know, they make us think that one election is the catch all be all, but it's every election. Every you know, election. When we don't vote, guess what? Mm-hmm. This is this is how they gain more power over us. But we are the bosses. But this is gonna be Tuesday, August twenty second, and it's gonna be at Ebenezer Baptist Church. I'm gonna be handing giving you something to take home with you that's gonna be so beneficial to you. And you once you see that, you're going to be like, wow, I didn't know I had this much power in my hand. And awesome. it's going to be 630. And I would love for you all to come out. My next one is going to be September 26th. And I will be putting out information about that. And that's going to cover VA benefits and a lot of stuff that you didn't know. But after that, you'll be like, if you didn't know, now you know. All right. Now, let me ask you this. Um Will people be able to actually register to vote at the event on um, the 22nd? Will there be? Yes, a, they a... will. Yay. All yes, right. yes, they <laughs> will. They will. Definitely. If you, yes, they will be able to register to vote that day. Right on the yes. spot. Okay. See, now that is very important information. So all of you who are out there and you're listening, please come to the event on August the 22nd. Because some of you get a little nervous about whether or not you're going to register to vote. Well, guess what? Miss Juanita will be there. And Miss Juanita, she's going to be able to uh, help you register right there on the spot and and all. And so we want you to know that there are various tools and various, various resources and people who are out here who are looking forward to having um, conversation with you, who are looking forward to assisting you uh, with a lot of these things that you you didn't feel comfortable doing or you, you felt like, I can't do that. Well, guess what? We have wisdom from Juanita. <laughs> and that's yeah. going to be for the next 10 months, starting August the 22nd, you'll be able to get wisdom from Juanita. And um, we definitely appreciate all the work that you're doing in the community. I, I saw you at Parks After Dark, walking around, talking to people and everything. And so we have people out here. Folks seem to think that folks are not out here. We do have people out here and they are working on your behalf. So with that being said, we always like to give our guests a uh, final opportunity to share and um, let us know if there's anything in particular that you you feel that we need to know, uh, share that with us. And you have three minutes to share. So do your thing and talk because I know you can talk. <laughs> don't don't no, uh, <laughs> I'm just, you know, I've got a series of uh, sessions coming up. And one of the things we're going to do in December, we're going to do in January is going to be taxes. You know, our community, I watched, I watched so many people in our community come to us in Congress needing help after they paid so many, almost a thousand dollars to get their taxes done. Uh. And I want to help you guys understand that taxes are not that hard. You know, I've been doing taxes ever since I was 18 years old, doing my own taxes, doing my family's taxes. My brother sent me messed up pictures of what his tax stuff looked like in ohio and i do his taxes i do my mom's and stepdad's taxes but i just i want to do this i'm going to be doing reverse mortgage i'm going to be doing so many different sessions because i believe that the more our community knows the less stress we have you know the less stress that i can take off of people and i have the time to do it okay i'm not in off i'm not working for anybody right now i'm back in retirement but i want to be able to help us to benefit you know if we can have less stress and more understanding of these things we'll be more engaged in those things and then we can uh maneuver our life better you know i tell people you know 
They, they're like, how do you know about the elections in this state? Because I wake up with politics and I go to bed. My daughter say, Mom, we could be talking about Beyonce and you turn it into politics. I say, because <laughs> politics runs our lives. You know, that's the thing that I want everybody to know is we have to be more engaged because the less engaged we are, the more the everybody else is engaged, the more rights that they take from us, you know. People always say about women, they like, oh, they took Roe v. Wade. You know, we had this for 50 years. Why am I 58 years old, about to be 59, and you say my rights I've had for this many years? I, mm -hmm. I should have my rights my whole life. <laughs> Why do I have it for a certain amount of years? Mm -hmm. And that's things that women don't think about. Some women don't think about that you say you had it this many years. You know, some women have never known this. Well, we shouldn't have to even think about knowing that we haven't had our rights for a certain amount of years. Correct. We should always have our rights to our bodies, you know. Correct. And that's the thing that we have to start thinking in a different frame of mind. And that has to do with voting also, that we should be thinking in a different frame of mind when it comes to these people. If they're not benefiting you, because they get paid a lot of money, mm -hmm. if they're not enhancing your life, then something needs to be done okay you need to you need to know that something needs to be done but like i said come out on tuesday and you'll learn quite a bit and like i said i'm going to have a series that's going to be going on that uh it's going to be beneficial to you all and then it'll be beneficial to me because i'll know what else i need to bring to the community that you all need because i learned quite a bit working in congress and there's a lot that I do. All I do is research stuff all day. Mm -hmm. So there'll be a lot more that I can bring to you all. So thank well, you so much, Georgia. Well, thank you so much, Ms. Swanita. Let me tell you what I heard was less stress. And I was watching something last week or reading something last week. And they shared how many um, years we live less than other people because of the amount of stress that we are under as black people. And then the other thing that I saw about stress was that black people prefer to work at home because they don't have to experience racism at such a great level. And that too has been beneficial into their life expectancy. And I'm like, are you kidding me? They had to have a COVID incident for us to come home, work at home, get the work done and all without having to deal with the, the jokes and the innuendos throughout the day in your work environments when you're working next to other people. And I just thought that was phenomenal that um, we can possibly increase our life expectancy just by eliminating some of this ongoing stress the ongoing stress of not knowing, the ongoing stress of being in these environments that are basically pleasant, but those conversations that are being held are, you know, uncomfortable. And no one seems to really care about that, that is causing us to not live as long as our kids. So with that being said, we do need less stress. And if you don't know, guess what, folks? Now you know. So, Juanita, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope this has been beneficial to those of you who are listening now, but also beneficial to those of you who will listen later. So, thank you. <laughs> all right, thank Henderson. You. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let you know that it was a great opportunity to see you once again on GA for Justice and hope you continue to come back. Uh, with the knowledge and information for the community. You've been listening and watching GA for Justice with your host, the community activist, Georgia Allen. And don't forget to hit the share link and share with other people and family and friends. Until the next time we meet, to the next time we greet, this has been GA for Justice on WVDM Radio. Bye -bye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.